All right, this is Lynn with Lynn's Hangouts, and we're here tonight at Slingshots in Cameron Park with the awesome hair band Skid Roses. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Specifically, Chetty with Chess Rockwell, the lead guitarist and vocalist. So, thank you, Chess, for spending some time with us tonight. All right, thank hanging you. out. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you. So, can I call you Chess, or should I call you Mr. Rockwell? I prefer Mr. Rockwell, but since we know each other so well, I like Chess. Okay. Yay, I get to call him Chess. Right. <laughs> That's funny. All right, Chess, so how long ago did you form Skid Roses? Uh, I want to say it was about four years ago. It started just for fun. Oh. You know, I, uh, I met a, actually he was a cop, wanted to form an 80s band. Uh -huh. And he had a drummer, it turns out, so the cop knew a drummer who turned out to be a uh, bipolar meth addict. That didn't work out real well. So I basically I took the 80s idea, got rid of the second guitar player, found a great bass player, found a great drummer, and then we found a great singer and just did, did my own thing, you know, and uh, we off. became Skid Roses. Oh. So we were actually at a different band before that for a couple of years, then we became Skid Roses, and that's been going strong for about three years now. Very cool. Very cool story. I love like that. <laughs> so how did you pick your band members then, basically? Well, you know, it started out for fun. We had a, a, an opportunity to play a party, you know, uh, and uh, do the 80s thing, and so we put that together. But then, you know, we got an opportunity, like, we could really do something here. We could really make a band out of this. So then uh, there was a guy named Ron Corvette just lurking in the shadows. He was just born to play 80s. And I knew, I, I saw this guy, I'm like, he has to be in my band. Absolutely. So I started with Ron Corvette, and from there we found the perfect drummer who would play with me in a, in a band before that, Kit Coda. So I already knew what I was getting there. The last piece was the uh, singer. So, and we couldn't find a singer anyway, any, anybody that could carry a tune. And then, right outside the rehearsal studio, behind the dumpster, there was this guy living <laughs> in a sleeping bag. Turns out his name was Jeff Lepper. I'm like, with a name like Jeff Lepper, you got to be an 80s man. <laughs> so we invited him to join the band. There he is, he's right and my God, he could sing. <laughs> and then, thank, yeah, thank God he could sing. And he jumped in, and there you go. Skid Roses was born. That's awesome. Okay, so now we know that Jeff Leppard is the real name, but how did you pick the stage names for the other three? Stage names? <laughs> oh, they're not, oh, sorry, not stage names. Oh, that's our given name. <laughs> awesome. I'm sorry, I did not know that. <laughs> okay, so how often does Skid Roses get together to practice? Uh, maybe twice a month. Oh. We, we usually, we're lucky, enough, we're lucky enough to have enough gigs where we play two, three okay. times a month, so Ooh. usually twice a month is good. We always like to keep fresh material, right. keep practicing new stuff, see what's going to work, what's, what's not going to work, and then right. just try things out. Keep it fresh. Awesome. That's perfect. We love it as fans. Love your music and love Thank the you. freshness of it, and it's always fun to rock out to a new song that you sing to us. So, very cool. Yeah. Looking forward to next month at, at uh, Strikes Halftime. Yeah, Radio. yeah. That's so we'll see what's new with you then. So. Love <laughs> I'll get the other two interviews then. So... <laughs> So how do you uh, pick the new material? We just kind of talked about that. You just uh, how do you actually pick the new songs that you guys rehearse? Well, it's just whatever we think is going to go over really well. We see, you know, we see what gets a good reaction. If something's not getting a great reaction, oh, we'll okay. see if we have something else. Let's try something new that might get a good reaction. Okay. We're kind of new Bon Jovi song right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just played Sammy's Bar in Roseville, so we learned a Sammy tune. Nice. Yeah, I think it was good for that show. Maybe not so much for every show because it doesn't get a great reaction, but we have a lot of fun playing it, so right. we do that. Oh, cool. Um, but, you know, and then it's a democracy, but then the band, will, what do we want to play? And uh, <laughs> eventually we all come to our senses and decide what's a good set list. <laughs> uh, but we bring something new in. Is it better than something we already have? If not, you know, we already play about 50 songs in our rotation that are we know are solid. So if something's not going to live up to that, we don't do it. Yeah, great. So you can always adjust. Yeah. Adjust accordingly, as right. I say. Very cool, very cool. So how long have you been playing guitar? Uh, what year is this? <laughs> uh, uh, it's 89. <laughs> uh, 20, 25 plus years, I don't know. Wow, it's been a long time. So yeah. it's just a natural thing for you then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say I love it. And I don't remember seeing that guitar you were playing tonight before. Is that new? You know what? It's, I've had that a long time. Oh. Um, but I hadn't played this band because the 80s stuff requires a tremolo bar, which is... Right. Whammy abuse, you know, right. the over the top stuff. But I decided, you know what, it's okay to have a cool looking V guitar with a set, you know, set uh, bridge. It's very so cool. So I brought that back. Yeah, very cool looking. I love it. Thank very you. Very cool, yeah. So do you play any other instruments? No. no. I, was, I was a frustrated drummer. I wanted to be a drummer as a kid, and my parents wouldn't buy me a drum kit because it's too loud, it makes too much noise. Eventually, you know, three years after I wanted one, I eventually paid for half. My parents paid for half the guitar, and the rest is history. Nice. Was a guitar player. But I've always been a, a big drummer fan. So I love the first thing, first and only thing I listen to is bands and drums. Okay, right. Yeah, 
Yeah, but the guitar, it's just a natural thing for yeah. you. So I wish I could play drums, but if I'd start along, maybe. But. Yeah, see, everything would be different now. Reality would be so different. That's if right. Just, <laughs> if they changed it out. So. <laughs> so I saw that you were on Good Morning Sacramento, where, yeah. and I think that's an, an excellent honor, and it must have been just amazing fun for you. So, yeah. But I wanted to ask you, what was that like? What's the story behind that? You know, it was a lot of fun. It was really cool to be on TV and knowing that, you know, at least 10 people were going to see us. Because I, I watched Good Morning Sacramento myself, uh -huh. at least at the time I did, and uh, I thought it was going to be very cool. Uh -huh. We showed up there, we set up in the studio, it was great, except, you know, you're in a TV studio, everything's got to be super whispered quiet for uh -huh. our monitors. So we were playing at, like, just whisper volume. Really? And it was, like, so not rock and roll. Uh -huh. <laughs> but it was, a, it, was a, it was a lot of fun at the time, and the anchors that were there were having fun with oh, it. they had a blast. They even had the yeah, wigs and everything. Yeah. That was really cool. So that made it really cool. You know, it's funny, though, you say that, that you were kind of whisper quiet and whatnot. It came across, uh, at least I saw it on the, on the website, but it came across like you guys were just really rocking. So. Oh, we, we, we always have a great time playing yeah. these great songs. Yeah. I mean, the 80s stuff is just so much fun. Yeah, you can't lose. <laughs> yeah, you can't have a bad time. Yeah, yeah exactly. Very cool. So. so the first time that I ever saw you was in Rockland at Strike's Halftime Bar and Grill quite a while ago. And I was chatting with some folks before the show, and they were from Elk Grove. And they told me that they follow you all over, that they love you, and they followed every gig. And I was very impressed with that, and I knew that I was in for a good time because of what they said. So to that point, you have a huge fan base that range in age from the 20s to, well, let's say little gray-haired ladies who <laughs> dance wearing the Skin Roses t-shirts. Yeah. So, yeah. So are, do you have any comments about such a wide range of fan base? Well, you know, the 80s tunes are just so, they're, you know, all the 80s stuff people forget nowadays, that was top 40 back in the 80s. Right. I was lucky enough to be a young teenager in the 80s and grew up and I loved all those songs. And right. I missed out on being able to play at that time. So I, when I was learning guitar, all those bands were at their peak. So now, I know what I'm doing on guitar, I can play a lot of that stuff. Now I can kind of bring that back, and we have, you know, with, with the great guys in the band, really just do such a great job bringing all those memories back and having the big fun, the arena shows, you know, all the good oh, times yeah. of the 80s. Just, you don't hear songs like that anymore. No, you, know? you don't. They're just so fun. They're pop songs, but they're kind of rocking and they're yeah. kind of heavy. Yeah. And it's just, it's just a good time. So, so the young kids maybe haven't heard it, or the people in their 20s maybe. Sure. They've heard a few songs, but don't know a lot of it, but it's just so much fun. It's party music. Yeah, exactly. And then the people, in, you know, a little bit older, they grew up with it, so they exactly. know it. Exactly. Yeah. So it brings back those wonderful memories, so. Yeah. Yeah, that is very cool. Very cool answer. Yeah, I love so that. We love doing that. I, I, I totally see those, you know, the 20-year-olds out there, and then mm -hmm. I, like say, the little gray-haired lady, and then myself, my yeah. age group, there's a lot of us, because we grew up in the 80s, and yeah. it just was an awesome time, and it, it, awesome music, so that's cool that you have such a, a, a range of following, so. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you'd like to say to Lynn's Hangouts and to your fans? Well, just, you know, I just, uh, you know, support the website, you know, about supporting local music, the venues that are, are, you know, fortunate enough to have us or that we're fortunate enough to play at. It's just a good time, you know. Awesome. Um, it's just sharing things with the audience and, and crystals and incense and whatnot. What, what can you hear? And, and orbs. Uh, yeah, this guy's all, it's all about the new age and the what crystals and keeping, keeping the music young and living life to its fullest, awesome. you know, when he's not shooting up. <laughs> All right. ah, details. Well, that said, the stage call, stand. we have to get back. Awesome. Yep. Thank you so much for your All interview. Right. You did an awesome job. Love it. Thank All you. Right. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.